Welcome to Earth Common Journal, The Launch Pod, where we invite authors, dignitaries, and guests to discuss our annual theme in an on-the-ground podcast series. In Volume 8, we discuss the shift of climate change to climate adaptation. We're your hosts, Jacqueline Ohm and Cole Kosh, and this is The Launch Pod. <laughs> episode, we speak to Erica Maybe, a communications major at McEwen University. So we've been having a lot of discussions about climate change and climate adaptation, and we want to get everybody's opinion on the matter, and it doesn't have to be right or wrong, but if you have anything to say or any research that you've even done in that field or something that you read lately. Um, oh, I, I whenever I think of kind of adaptation, I naturally start to think about like what technologies that we've started coming out with to help aid in that adaptation, especially living in such a technologically forward world now, right? So um, I think it's going to be interesting to see in the next even like 10, 20 years, what kind of new technologies start coming out to help with things like climate change and even... um, when oh I forget her name is it Michelle Hewley yes yes yeah. who did the wildfire yes. kind of podcast yeah so when uh, she's talking about that I was thinking about how now they actually do like controlled wildfires and even just like that looking at how that is affecting different stuff now um, that's like a technology in its own I guess mm. yeah yeah I, I had even heard how um, in the Plains Cree had long used Mm -hmm. fire as a way to um, create sight lines for tracking the bison, um, for tracking enemies. Because the plains are long and wild and uh, they had used it strategically and also to kind of keep the boreal forest at bay Mm. so they'd have their open territory. And um, her third episode will kind of feature more indigenous practices okay. of wildfire use, which is interesting. It's like, okay, if, if something's not your enemy, then how do you how do you integrate it? How do you become in relationship with it? Which is, I think, maybe more of the conversation of sort of opposing, okay, what do we do with it? Mm-hmm. Right? Like opposing climate change is not going to change it. Yeah. Screw um, you, climate change. Don't <laughs> come around here. <laughs> get out of my house, climate change. I didn't invite you. It's like, well, okay. <laughs> still gonna happen right yeah yeah Yeah. do you see yourself um having to think about what you're going to do with your future and the kind of jobs that you may want to create or become a part of uh yeah I think I mean one thing I was always kind of told even back in like high school was uh, half of the jobs that are going to be around when I actually go to apply on jobs are still being created, right? So they always, I know they, I think they still tell uh, kids in high school that now is that, that half the jobs you end up in aren't even, like, haven't even been created yet, right? Um, and I think that goes towards, like, since there's more of a push for, you know, climate change awareness coming out and everything like that, I think that's going to open up a lot more. Um, availability of different jobs and even just the creation of different jobs going forward. Um, I think there's a lot of jobs that could be created to help out and aid in climate change and help change the climate. (laughs) Change it for the positive as opposed to a negative. Mm. Yeah, that's part of the definition of climate adaptation is Mm -hmm. not only trying to, let's say, mitigate the, the consequences of climate change, but looking for new opportunities, which perhaps is more motivating for people to say like, okay, well, then there's going to be different types of jobs, new jobs, or you could start that sector. You could, you could create your own field of work. And as Michelle was explaining in her presentation about fire on the landscape is there's a lack of communications jobs when it comes to conversation about wildfire management and yeah. forest resources and so many opportunities for people to kind of create change yeah. or talk about change or um, get people to have more conversations because it's more available. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't have enough of those conversations. I think a lot of 
times uh, components of climate change just kind of like go right over people's heads um, so even like I want to say even like the extremes uh, of climate change that people don't necessarily recognize so even this so this past summer of 2022 we had what a heat warning every three days <laughs> Um, and then I keep hearing people say that this winter is supposed to be absolutely freezing. It's supposed to be a really harsh winter. And looking at that, it's like, so we go from being extremely hot to just extremely cold. And with the late start to winter this year, I mean, it's already, it's what, November 2nd and we just got snow. That's pretty late in the year for us. I remember growing up, we would have snow for at least like a couple weeks before Halloween even got there. I remember wearing snow pants under my costume. Mm -hmm. like, And so just even looking at that and how that has escalated, I guess, in a sense over the years. And people don't necessarily recognize that as being climate change. They just think, oh, the, the weather is changing. Yeah, I think there's there's those memories associated to it because we have the tradition of Halloween. I have a 10-year-old daughter, and she doesn't know the pain of <laughs> yeah. having to not only want to choose your costume that you want to have, but when you grow up in a northern prairie city like we do, um, can my costume go on top of a right. um, snowsuit? Or if you put your snowsuit on top of your costume, then no one's going to see yeah. it. And it was just this pain. Like and you have I to factor that in. Right? Like, was it, do you think climate change is the result of millions of children praying <laughs> in <laughs> Canada for a warm to Halloween? Have to wear the snowsuit. Because, like, now I'm here and it's finally happened. And I'm like, no, I want cold. <laughs> this is not a good sign. Oh, <laughs> I remember having to get, like, you're a, like, not like this. <laughs> not like <laughs> this. <laughs> not like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember even just like things like having to get e like a size bigger because you had to factor in. Okay, is this gonna fit a jacket underneath? Yeah. Right, and so you get one size up, and yeah, it's it's just it's, I'm almost slightly. I mean, if we forgot about climate change for like a second, I'm kind of jealous of the kids that <laughs> get to not have to wear the snowsuit <laughs> right now. <laughs> Oh, they can go out there in, like, T-shirts on Halloween. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of wild. I mean, it was just uh, yesterday that we got the big snowfall, and the day before that, I mm -hmm. was just, I walked over here in a blazer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day oh. was, yeah, full full winter garb and oh, yeah. scrambling to find snow pants for my daughter. Yeah. I, I was dumb and just wore, like, my canvas coat, and then I was walking to health sciences, and all the snow was coming at me. Oh, and then no. when I got to, to the station, I stand, I look down, I'm just completely white. All the oh, snow yeah. just, like, collected on me, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to be wet in a minute. I <laughs> had the, the classic, I forgot to wear, like, taller boots. And then, oh, of course, no. since we got, like, a foot of snow, all like, all at once, too. It didn't even slowly start happening, yeah. right? It was, like, a foot of snow just overnight. And so, yeah, I had, like, runners on, and snow was just, like, seeping in. I like wet socks for a little bit, which is not the best feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness we have air dryers um, in the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. um, but I have heard that um, being acclimated to, sorry, being a, being adjusted to the cold, being a little bit cold is actually better than being too comfortably warm as far as our species goes, which is mm -hmm. like an interesting conversation yeah. when you think about how humans for the large part of our evolution, lived sort of uncomfortably with the weather or lived, lived were maybe stronger with the changing of the seasons. Um, we didn't have these perfectly contained homes with like adjustable heat and we were exposed to the elements all the time and our body consistently acknowledged through the elements that we are a part of this natural world that we couldn't really control temperature wise. Yeah. And then for short, very tiny amount of human evolution, we have grown so comfortable. And I've listened to some people talk about how um, it's important for us to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. the, the Stoics, like even way back, Seneca was like, he would actually just sleep. Like he was a rich dude and he would just sleep on the pavement outside. And he would do it for a week just to be like, and not eat too, just to be mm -hmm. like, yo, this is what other people live like. I need to like make sure that I'm appreciating what I have. Yeah. And not only that, like, whenever it gets cold, I just run that in my head. I'm like, you're just acclimatizing. It's yeah. just, you know, you got to be uncomfortable for a bit. It's going to suck. Mm. <laughs> like, no matter what. So, but don't ever wear, like, 
too many coats, right? Like yeah. I have people like I used to work with Filipinos and they were fresh here from the Philippines. And it's like, you know, September and they're wearing three winter coats. And I was like, what are you going to do when it's actually cold outside? Yeah. You need to be wearing a hoodie so you can acclimatize. <laughs> this, this, is, this is true. I was just walking uh, to the university today and I was spotting people in various different dress as far as like layers or open jackets or people not open jackets. Shorts. But, and oh. I, my neighbor is one of those guys, always in shorts. <laughs> but I could tell, I'm like, I could tell who sort of grew up mm-hmm. in this city yeah. was yeah. based on how they dressed during like the first first haul of like winter yeah. I could tell I'm like okay yeah you're probably international because uh, the amount of garb or just how uncomfortable mm-hmm. it was which is I mean it's a gauge of like weather I remember yeah. I lived yeah. in an apartment and um, I I didn't have a weather app but I would look out my window and see how business people were dressed yeah. mm-hmm. and whether or not they were holding their ears <laughs> or, or they were like had really high up shoulders and they're all tucked in I'm like oh it's cold today yeah. okay mm-hmm. and then I would dress yeah. That's a good yeah. metric, honestly. Yeah. It, you know, it's a visual, but I <laughs> think like that guy looks cold. I'm wearing more clothes. <laughs> but I mean, al- but ultimately, yeah, I think it is really important to be kind of uncomfortable and in the elements. Yeah. Um, you know, you could think that walking to university, um, or you know, going to your your job, or you know, going to the grocery store instead of taking the car if you live close, walking there instead and just acknowledging, okay, this is this is where we're at. And mm-hmm. if it's Halloween and you notice, oh my gosh. Normally, this is supposed yeah. to be a lot colder, and it becomes more real, perhaps, mm-hmm. than being always contained in that perfect 21 degree temperature yeah. that seems to be set for cars and houses yeah. and offices. And this reminds me of, uh, so I'm I work as a personal trainer as my part time job, and one of my favorite quotes. Now I relate it to fitness, but I guess it applies to everything in the real world too, especially even in this conversation. Um, but the quote is, uh, be, or get or become comfortable with being uncomfortable so it's just kind of goes to show like get comfortable being in that uncomfortable coldness because eventually you will adapt to it so you become comfortable with that um and people always grow when they're on like when you're comfortable you never grow you're never going to strive to do better right yeah practice and training then perhaps that is the larger The larger lesson that we have is how do we get comfortable with the changing climate? Like, how do we get comfortable with the uncomfortableness of this Mm -hmm. so that there's agency in that? Because I think if if we're all just defeated, like, oh, it's just too much, I'm so uncomfortable, Um, nothing's happening from that. Saying, okay, you know, we're resilient, Um, you know, I've lifted you know, big weights before, I have been in really cold weather, I have gone up against a really hard test or whatever it is. And what do I do? Like, how do, how do I get comfortable in that? That'll, that? that'll be my response to uh, my opinion on adaptation to climate change is getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. There we go. <laughs> I think we can end it right That's there. Yeah. I think we can end it period. right there. Right there. <laughs> Thank you. Erica. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to Earth Common Journal's The Launch Pod. I've been Jacqueline Ohm. I've been Cole Kosh. And stay tuned for our next episode. <laughs>